So as we get started today, we're going to talk about how to set and track goals to achieve results. I, I'm a firm believer, and I've done surveys of thousands of uh, of workers and employees and managers, and how many of them do you think really have set goals that they track? It's less than 10 to 20%. So I want you to get on track today and learn how to set targets and goals. So if I can help you at any time, George Headley here, Hard Hat Biz Coach. You can find us online, hardhatbizcoach.com. I've got lots of videos. I've got a YouTube channel, and I've got some templates and some uh, ongoing courses that you can download. Just, just go on to hardhatbizcoach.com. All right, let's get going here. Ready? All right, so my name's George Headley. I've been coaching construction clients for about 20 to 30 years now, and it's been a really great journey. But I notice that people who have written goals are twice as successful as those who don't. So think about yourself. Do you have written clear targets for all of your employees, your crews, your people, your sales, your estimating? Because without goals, you're going to struggle. You're going to continue to struggle and never really hit the results that you want to achieve. To get started, I want to ask you some very simple questions. Being a contractor, building commercial industrial buildings, helping contractors, home builders, contractors of all kinds, construction and other ones. Uh, so the question we start with is, what results do you want to hit? So when I wrote my book called Get Your Construction Business to Always Make a Profit, I was thinking about making a profit, achieving results. So I want you to think about what results do you want to hit? So as we get going, set targets, track them, and achieve the results you want. All right, so what results? If you wanted to play golf, could you imagine playing without a, a green or a pin or anything to aim at? Just a long green fairway. That wouldn't be very fun, would it? How about going bowling and there's no pins and there's no scoreboard? That would be kind of boring. Who cares? Just throw the ball down the alley and if it hits or not, you don't know if you're good or bad, just keep playing. What about football? Can you imagine going to the Super Bowl, paying $1,000, $5,000 a seat? If there wasn't a scoreboard and we didn't know who was the best team and who to root for because there was no end zone and no scoreboard and nobody nobody cared. Yeah, it'd be hard. What about uh, what about NASCAR? Yeah, well, yeah, I know you're going to like NASCAR. You know why they call it NASCAR? Because it's a NASCAR. And you're going to like it just to watch the crashes, right? But no, we want to see who's going to win the race, the score, who's first, second, third, all those kinds of things. So we, we wouldn't really want to be too active in NASCAR if there wasn't a finish line. And how about fishing? You go fishing. I mean, maybe is that is is it just to drink beer or is it to drink, uh, get a suntan? What's, what's the purpose? The purpose is to achieve the goal. The goal is to take home some fish so you can enjoy the fish and in with your family, your friends, and have a great time, right? It's not just to go sit out in the sun. Uh, so think about what your goals are. What are you trying to hit? If you're a contractor on a construction job and there's no schedule, you just keep going. And there's no budget. You just keep going. What would happen? You definitely lose a lot of money without a clear target and a results to aim at, right? Or if you're in a maze, you're just going around circles. You don't have a clue. You just keep going through the motions, doing your job, working really hard, but you're not achieving enough bottom line profit. Your crews aren't achieving the goals required by the estimate, and the customer gets ticked because the job's over budget and late, right? So what about your company? How do we achieve the results that you want to hit? I can't imagine a company without goals, targets, and something to aim at, right? So the question is, do you set clear targets and goals? I'll never forget, forget years ago, I was out on one of my big job sites in uh, Anaheim, California, and I walked up to the side, big 80,000 square foot, big building, uh, a bil uh, warehouse industrial building, and there was one of our long-term laborers was there, and I saw him using a shovel he, to clean up the residue and the debris and the trash all over the building. <clears throat> he had a broom but he didn't have a shovel. So I saw him taking the shovel and walking way over to the other side of the building where the trash can was, throw it in there, and then running back. So I was trying to imagine what he was trying to accomplish. I mean, the speed he was going, he was moving quick, but he wasn't getting much done. 
he didn't have a clue what the target and the goal was or what the budget was or what tools were available for him to use. And so I go over and ask him, he'd been with me a long time, and Johnny, what's going on here? Well, I'm cleaning up. Why don't you use a wheelbarrow or a, maybe even a skip loader? Because well, the boss isn't here and I don't have a key to the tool bin. So I just doing what I can, boss, keep busy. Well, the goal is not to keep busy. It's to get the trash out of there within the budget. Oh, so anyway, I couldn't find the supervisor, the foreman, the crew, man, crew leader anywhere. And I finally went over and unlocked the tool bin with my master key and gave him a, gave him a wheelbarrow. And I'm thinking, man, I got that problem solved. I did my job today. Well, did I really? What wheelbarrows do you chase? Do you run around in a circle hoping people achieve their goals? You don't give them scorecards. You don't give them a budget. You don't tell them where they are every week. It'd be like playing football and you don't even know what the score is after the first quarter. You can't win the game unless you know the score. How do you expect your people to do what you want them to do unless they're clearly explained the targets and the goals and give them a weekly update where we are over the long period of, 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 of the projects? So what do I do? What do you do? What should we do to achieve this to achieve our ultimate Just goal. for so, your education and uh, improvement, I do have my book available. It's on Amazon.com. Get your construction business to always make a profit. It includes the hard hat blueprint, biz builder blueprint, to help you lay out and design your strategic business plan. I also have on my website, hardhatbizcoach.com, I have a, a total online 25 hours of training courses including 30-page workbooks for each course. And each course includes all sorts of materials on how to build a company, estimating and bidding strategies, winning more work, field and project management, construction financial management 101, all the things you need to run a really strong business. I've got over 100 templates on my website. Just click on tools and templates and you'll see it and they're available or Excel spreadsheets that I personally used in my business. Click the send me more information and I'll be glad to set up a time for an introductory coaching call to help you. So what's wrong with our company? What's wrong with your company? What could make your company better? Just sit down and explain what we're trying to accomplish here. Written targets, keyword written and tracked. That's the key. And so I ask business owners often, why are you in business? Well, to make money. How much? As much as I can. Well, how do I measure that? How do I know if you're on track? How do I know halfway through the year if you're going to achieve your goals? Do you know how many jobs you have to bid at the bid rate that you win at that's going to take in order for you to achieve your goals? Do you know where you break even? Do you know your numbers? Do your crew leaders know how many hours they have to finish the project that they're assigned to? Do you give them an update? Well, with all these answers, are if they're all no, your people are just going through the motions. You and your company isn't can't achieve the goals unless I know what I have to do. If I want to add more sales, well, I got to have a plan to make it happen. And the plan would be what? Well, I'm currently have 12 jobs. I need to get 20, I need to get 15. I need to get more customers and more targets and more proposals and more face-to-face -face meetings. How many more? Well, I can now create a plan because I have a goal. So think about what you're trying to accomplish. And so a lot of times I get called all the time, what's the purpose for your business? A purpose is not to make more money. It's to make a specific amount of money and a specific amount of sales in the year that you're working in. For example, I say, what's your sales goal as much as I can? Well, how do I know if you're happy? I say, what's your overhead goal? They say 10%. I say 10% of what? I want to make 5% of profit. Of what? Do you have a sales goal? Do you have an overhead goal? Do you have a gross profit goal? If you don't have a target and goal, how do you know if you ever hit it? How do you know if you're successful until your accountant does your books in, in April, before April 15th, right? That's not a way to run a business. That's not a way to run a project or a crew or to get things done. So what do we want to accomplish here? We want to achieve our goals. So what do business owners really want? Why are you in business? What do you want? You want... Do you want to make some money? Do you want to make a lot more money? What are you really trying to accomplish? Articles for uh, magazines. I'm in con 
I'm in construction business owner magazine. I'm in uh, masonry magazine, metal building magazine. I, I write a lot of articles and I've been doing it for over 20 years on construction and business uh, improvement and profitability, et cetera. And so as I write these articles, I'm thinking, what do the owners and the managers of these businesses want to learn so that they can achieve their goals? Well, they want to make a profit. Well, how much? How do we attract that? They want to win business at a higher margin level. They want their crew to hit their goals. They want their estimates to be accurate. They want to be organized and systemized so they can enjoy the benefits of business ownership. So what do business owners want? I don't know about you, but I want my business to give me what I want. So I, I want some freedom. I want to build some wealth. I want some passive income down the road. I want to build a slow down someday. What do you really want? So the question is, what, what do you want? Do you want money or do you want happiness? If you make more money or a specific targeted amount, you're going to be happy. If you just make a little bit of money and you're not sure, you're never going to be happy. Maybe you want some freedom or you want health, wealth, and family, and fitness, and uh, friends, or faith, whatever your things are. Maybe you want time or money. I don't know what you want, but I can tell you one thing. If you have clear targets and goals, you're going to hit them, and you're going to achieve what you want. So, so the real question is, what do you want? Is your goal more? More is not a goal. Goals and targets have to be specifically measurable with a deadline. More is not achievable. You never know when you achieve it. Try harder is not a goal. Work harder is not a goal. So how do we improve our company to achieve the goals we want? That's what I want to ask you here. So CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, they focus on results. They get those jillion-dollar salaries because they achieve results. What kind of results do you want to achieve? That's the question here. What do you want to achieve? The Wall Street Journal spits out their results every quarter. Profit, stock price, sales, growth, dividends. That's what we want to know. So when we look at our company, we ask ourselves, I want to make some profit. Well, how much specifically? Not a percentage, a lump sum dollar amount. It's a, it's a, I want my price and my value of my business, my return on overhead, my return on equity to grow at a certain rate, 10%, 15%. I want to make a million dollars gross profit, net profit, whatever your thing is. And I want my revenue to go from 5 million to 7 million, which means I need more jobs, more customers, more proposals, more bids, or larger jobs, right? So what are you, what are you trying to accomplish here? And when you spend all your time on estimating and bidding and scheduling and ordering material and equipment and all the things, the change orders and the customer meetings, you spend all your time doing the work instead of sitting down, setting a goal, creating a plan to make it happen. So what do you want to happen? I want results. What specific written targets and goals do you want to achieve? So when you, when you come to the fork in the road every day, what do you do? What's your focus? Where do you want to go? Which area do you want to move towards? What do you want to do better? What? How can we measure it? So we have to make some tough decisions. So what results will give you the best answer, the solution to your long-term goals, short-term project goals, whatever it may be? So I got to pick the right choice. So I can continue to do business the same I've always done and hope things get better. That'll never work. Or I can continue to focus on profit, growth, and value. Profit, growth, and value. And that takes some planning and some strategy and some, some business uh, plans, some strategic planning sessions, some workshops. You get your team together. We got to get them all aimed at the same target. So everybody's headed toward results, right? So are you going to continue to do work or achieve results? Well, I got to know what I'm aiming at to make that happen. And I love this cartoon. It kind of kind of sums up what we've been talking about over the last few minutes. The teacher, uh, the kid, little kid student talking to the teacher, you'll find my test, my test results are pretty good, pretty good indication of your abilities as a leader. So I want you to think about what results, if I came into your company as a business coach, one of the first things I'm going to look at is your sales growth, your overhead 
as a percentage of your total sales and job cost. And I'm going to really look hard at your profit, not your overall profit, each job, what jobs went over, what jobs went under. Did you continually bid at 25%, but you only made 20%. What's your trends? Are you achieving your goals? Are you achieving results? Are your crews bringing in the labor and equipment on budget? Well, if they are, I know, guess what? You probably are tracking results. You're giving your crews specific targets and goals to aim at, and you're giving them an update on a regular basis, and then they're achieving the goals. So I hope that you can think about what we've talked about over the last few minutes and, and start working towards defining your goals, making sure they're measurable, and making sure you track them. Okay, let's continue on. So I know what I want as a business owner. I, I want to I want to make some money. I want to make 100 grand. I want to make 200 grand. So I got to stop running in place. I, I got to stop being overworked and spread too thin. I got to figure out how to eliminate stress by getting organized, systemized, and in control. I've got to stop making all the decisions and let go. Get off that low price treadmill, low bid treadmill. I got to scale up. I got to grow. I'm gonna, I got to, I got to get to a next level so I can actually make some money. Money building a bigger, better, highly profitable business. I got to have an accountable management team to, that runs the business so I can be the visionary leader and top salesperson. And I got to start making high margins, not accepting low margins. And of course, I got to work less and get a life and enjoy my freedom so I can enjoy the benefits of ownership. So I can be, you know, spend more time with my family or investments or whatever I want to do to achieve my ultimate goals. So what's the vision of your business? What do you want it to be? What do you want the sales vision to be? If you're at a million dollars in sales, how do we get it to a million five? If you're at five million, how do we get it to seven million? If you're at 10 million, how do we get it to 15 over the next couple of years? That's the question. Where do you want to be? So we have to have a growth plan. And I always suggest a growth plan goal target of 15% per year. Now, the last couple of years, we had a lot of inflation. So 15 wouldn't even keep up. But when the inflation is relatively flat, you know, three, four, four, five percent, you know, we need to grow at, uh, at least triple, double, triple, 10 or 15% per year. And if you don't grow, your costs go up, your overhead goes up. People want more money. Costs more for accounting. I just got a quote for, for a set of tires on my golf cart. Uh, um, we looked it up uh, four years ago. It was $800. Today, it's $1,530, four years later. I mean, everything costs more. Uh, it, it, and so what about your, your profits? What are you doing? Do you know your numbers? Do you track your numbers? Do you track your receivables? Do you work with your bank to get a higher margin on your money, uh, a dividend, a uh, financial you know, return, a rate? Uh, what about your people, your talent and people? Do you have a plan to add one more crew? Okay, we need a plan. So the target is one more crew. And now we need a plan to make it happen. Are you building a management team that can run your business with your leadership? Are you, what are you doing about implementing, drafting organizational systems, systems that people follow and do every single day? They all do business the same way. What about achieving higher margin customers? Do you have a goal to attract five new customers over the next six months? What's your plan to make it happen? And what are you doing about sales and marketing so you can win better work? Are, do you have a plan for that? Do you have a budget for that? Are you increasing your, your sales and marketing efforts and customer development program? And what do you want your role to be? I want my role to be fill in the blanks. I don't want to be running around fixing everybody else's problems, putting out fires all day. I want to be the get work guy and the overall leader manager. So lastly, freedom and wealth. That's why we're in business. What, what's the purpose for your business? So in order to make this happen, uh, successful builders, successful contractors uh, have several things in common. Uh, number one, first of all, they know what they want to achieve. Number one, you've got to have a clear picture of what you want, targets and goals. If you don't have them written out, clearly measurable targets and goals, it, it's just a good idea. So you work really hard and hope it works out. So then once we know what we want, 
then we can draft a written plan to achieve what we want, our targets and goals. Without a written plan, you're just drifting through, ho hoping it gets better and working hard. And then we have to have a tracking system. Always keep track and make progress towards the results you want, targets and goals. So do you have a plan, a written plan to achieve your targets and goals? And then of course, that involves a scorecard, a scoreboard, a tracking system, all those kinds of things. And then lastly, as we improve our business, we wanna consistently improve our company our operations, our systems, which will equal improved results. So that could be accurate estimates, we don't lose money on jobs. We hit our budget for our crew hours. We finish on time. We don't have any accidents, whatever it might be. We win higher margin work. So we're continually improving our results. So when you, let's say you're going to build a house. You got a beautiful lot on a lake. You hire an architect and they say, draw me some plans. They say, well, what do you want? What do you want to happen? What do you want this house to be? What's the purpose of this house? Is it family? Is it entertainment? Is it uh, appreciating value? Do you want do you have a budget? Do you want to spend high money, low money? They got to know what you want before they can draw a plan. Just like in your business, what are we trying to achieve here? And so what do you want? I want to grow and make higher margin profits, organize, systemize, and control. I want my crews to know what's going on. And so they can achieve to perform and achieve the goals for the crew hours and the job quality and safety. And then I want my projects on time, on budget, uh, with no lost profit, margin fade. And I want my business to deliver me what I want as the owner. So what do you want? If you don't have a clear picture of what you want, how are you ever going to achieve it? So what decisions do we need to make? What systems and, and scorecards and tracking programs do I need to install to achieve my goals? Most of my clients, when they first come to me, don't have a tracking system to track crew hours on a daily, weekly basis. They just build and then hopefully, you know, at the end of the job, they add it up to see if they make any money. By not allowing people to know where they are, they just keep doing what they need to do. And so what's your playbook look like? What do we need to do to make it happen? So the question is, what results do you want? When your business continues to grow at the same level, stays pretty flat, you're not achieving what you need. What do we have to do to get it to the next level? What do we have to do to get off the same results line into the better results line? We have to do business better. We have to do it di different. And so that's what I call the gap, the owner-manager leadership gap, where you don't do what you need to do to improve results. We need targets and goals. So you can stay in your comfort zone and continue to do what you always do and expect the same, right? You get comfortable being miserable because you're not making enough money. Or we can make a change and do things differently. People call me for help as a, as a business consultant and coach, and we have to change how they're currently doing business or they wouldn't be so uncomfortable, they have to call for help. And so in order to improve, we have to make some major changes. Change is hard, it's difficult, and you have to commit to do it. And so you decide you're either going to do it or you're not. Do it or don't. It's either yes or no. There's no maybe. There's no I'm going to try. I'm going to start next month. No, we're going to do it or we're not. We're going to implement a job cost tracking system or we're not. We're going to track our crew hours or we're not. We're going to make sure we stay under budget on overtime or we don't. You decide how you want your business to run. The results are the results you achieve are the results of how you run your business. So you can decide, do it or don't, yes or no, stoplight. The stoplight says yellow, red, or green. It's either go or don't go. When you go in the middle, you're in a mess. That's when you're sort of trying and you hope you don't get caught or you hope you don't get hit or you always feel a little bad about running through a yellow. It's just not what we want to do. So yes or no. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe. Never. Try. Hopefully. Those are all really bad words that I've eliminated in our, in our coaching sessions. And hopefully my clients have 
stop saying, well, hopefully we'll do better. I'm going to try. Well, that means you're not going to do it. Just get over it. Quit kidding yourself, right? So think about what your role is. So, so if you need some help, you know, uh, what are you going to do to move up? What are you going to do to achieve better results, higher results? And so if you need some help, you can always call me, email me, gh at hardhatbizcoach.com, and we'll set up an introductory call where I can help you think through some ideas and see if you want me to help you move forward in a, in a professional manner. So just give me a holler, give it a shot, think about it. But first thing we're going to talk about, what do you want? What needs to get fixed? Why do we need to fix it so we can achieve higher results, right? That's the key. So think about when you know where you're headed, you can figure out the best way to get there. And so you, in order to make that happen, you need a map. You need a plan. you got to know where you're going. And you can't get there unless you know. Well, you can get there if you just keep driving around and hopefully you'll find it. But you need clear targets, goals, and then a plan of where you want to go and how you're going to get there. So people with targets, clear targets, lead people who don't have targets and goals. People without targets and goals are used by others. For example, a customer calls and says, can you do this job? Well, you don't even know what it is, and so you say yes. Well, they're using you because they can't get anybody else to do it because, for whatever reason, it's, it's difficult, it's hard, and you can't make any money. So you go, oh, okay, I'll do it. I want to keep my crews busy. No, that's not how we run our business, right? So let's... So let's think about the real world out there. Can you imagine a professional construction co contracting business without clear targets and goals? Could you imagine successful ones? No. I've noticed I have clients that do 1 million a year up to 150 million a year. The ones that are bigger have better systems and strategies, targets and goals. The ones that are smaller scramble around trying to make some money, and it's really hard because they don't know their numbers, and they don't know their targets, and they don't know their goals. Can you imagine a football team without a clear picture of how to what we got to do to win and what, what's it going to take? They see the scoreboard on a momentary basis. And how about working on a field crew where you really didn't know when you're supposed to get done? Can you imagine how bad that would be? Well, that's the reality of most contractors, not all, but many, that struggle. Nobody knows what we're trying to accomplish here. And so the foreman just says, hey, we need more guys. So you send them more guys. Or he says, we need to work overtime. So you just let them work overtime. But you don't tell them how many man days you have to get the job done or crew days. So think about the results of what you're doing is because how you do it. Can you imagine a football team without – what are they doing at halftime? They're coming up with a plan – to increase their performance. So the number one thing that improves results, according to a Gallup survey of 80,000 managers, the most number one important thing, top thing to improve results, more profit, more productivity, more customer satisfaction, more employee retention is everybody on the team knows exactly what's expected of them. Performance, units, score, Results, deadlines, timelines, targets, and goals. When I go into factories occasionally to meet with people or to look at potentially remodeling their facility, I'll see at the end of each line, manufacturing line, they've got a they've got a, a like a flip chart, and they got goal today, three hundred and seventy five units. Everybody knows the goal for today. Does your crew clearly know what the goal is for today? If they don't, they're just going through the motions. So everybody on the team's got to know what's expected. That's the key. So think about how you clearly communicate to your team on a daily and weekly, not monthly, not quarterly, daily and weekly basis. So we need to have clear goals and targets. You know, I was out on a job site. I asked my foreman, how many people are working today? He says, oh, about half. I go, yeah, that's what I thought, you know. So I ask him what to do. I say, hey, hey, can you? I, I need you to go over here and pick up that, and I got to have you go to the lumber yard, pick up some four by twos, two by fours. I, I got mixed up. So a box and a dollhead nail, sixteen tens, all those things. And then I need you to go by here and drop off a 
this for me, this set of plans to Joe over there. And uh, I, I go, okay, you got it? He goes, uh-huh, uh-huh, I got it, which means I got no clue. Because it wasn't written, it wasn't clear, it wasn't specific. I wasn't clear with my communication. I'm at fault, not him, for misunderstanding. So we've got to get clear targets and goals. So I don't know about you. Do you own golf clubs or do you play golf? That's the question. Most people own golf clubs that aren't golfers. Golfers play every week, maybe once or twice. I play twice a week. And uh, yeah, I feel like a golfer. I wish I was better, but I feel I feel I, I really enjoy it. I just talked to my brother the other this morning and talking about setting a golf trip up for in a few months when it gets a little warmer. And uh, could you imagine playing golf where there's no targets, there's no greens, there's no pins, just one long piece of grass. Just keep going around for four hours, and then you go in and start drinking, right? <laughs> Coke, beer, whatever you want. Uh, that wouldn't that wouldn't be very much fun, would it? So, so the question is, I, you know, I, I go on golf trips with my friends. Here I am out there in uh, Ireland, Old Head, Ireland, one of the best courses ever. And uh, why do I want to go all the way across the world? Why is golf so intriguing or so addictive or so much fun if you're really into it? Uh, just to hit a little white ball into a hole? I mean, come on. Uh, hey, by the way, I, I forgot to tell you, the other day I almost had a hole in one. Yeah, I only missed it by three putts. <laughs> bad joke. Anyway, so why golf? It's interesting. It's different. You have, you're outdoors. You have different terrain, different views. You're with your friends. You know exactly what score you're at. You know what the score should be for the hole, you know, what par is, what a bogey is. And uh, it's challenging. So, so how can I achieve or model a game of golf to achieve results? everybody's got to know the target and score. I mean, when we play, everybody knows everybody's score. Everybody knows what their score is. And we got bets and it's all about improving and getting better. You know, I'm taking lessons and it's, uh, it's hard to get better, especially as you get older. Right. Yeah. But, but we're all trying to improve and we know exactly when you hit the ball, you know, exactly if you had a good result and just look, you can tell it's instant feedback. Now, if you work for a company that has no results ever posted, you never know if you even got a job after this one's done. So there's no reason to work harder. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I don't know. One of my favorite courses is Cyprus. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, what results do I want to hit? You know, we try to hit to the green. And um, it it's uh, it's over water. It's over the water. Sorry, you can't see it on the slide there. But, uh so, so you try to hit the green and you go in the ocean and, you know, and, and, but, but the key to golf is a scorecard. And so I got to have a scorecard with clear written, measurable, visual targets and goals. I got to be able to see the goal and I got to have a scorecard to keep track. And then I've got to update it every hole, every shot you update it, you count your strokes. And then uh, you got to know your current, your past and current results. Current's the key here. And then I can provide coaching and feedback. But if you don't know where you are, I can't just keep yelling and telling you to go faster. Well, I don't know if you're slow or not. I don't know where you are. So when you go on a driving range, you know, you just sit there and hit the ball. You don't, you don't really get any feedback. I mean, yeah, you kind of know if you're better, but you're not sure because you're not out on the course and there's no score. So I always say aim at nothing, hit it every time. And when you aim at something on purpose with all your energy, you'll be surprised at what you can accomplish. So successful people know what they want and decide what's important. So what's important to you? Profit, labor cost, equipment cost, growing your business, making five to five, six, seven, ten percent net profit, on time, no accidents better customers. What's important to you? What are you trying to accomplish? I got to have clear targets and goals to achieve what I want to achieve. So, so if I look at typical job cost goals, you know, do more with less, you know, do more with less, work real hard, do all those kinds of things. That doesn't motivate people. Work harder, harder than what I'm already working. So I got to, I got to think about job cost, schedule, quality, safety, accurate estimates, customer goals, uh, I, I, if I don't have a, a clear target, I can't be held accountable. And then I'll, then I'll say, it's not my fault. 
You gave me a bad estimate. You gave me a bad crew. My guys are no good. Well, you have to be accountable. You can only be accountable if you know what you're trying to accomplish. So think about what we're trying to accomplish here. So we need a finish line. We need to know exactly what we're aiming at and what the measurement is. A deadline, a timeline, <coughs> and a score. What score are we trying? You know, you're trying to break 10 seconds in 100 meters or the Olympic 9-5 or whatever it is. So, so we got to have clear visual targets, clear visual targets. i got to know the finish line. And so the question is, what's your bottom line? What results do you want to hit? <laughs> there we go. Uh, do your people know? The core question is, do your people know what you're trying to accomplish? Go around and ask my crew. Ask your crew. <clears throat> what, when, we, when are we trying to finish by? How many crew hours do we have to finish this job? What's, what's, the, what's the downside if we don't finish on time? Do we make money or not? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So if they don't know, how can you expect them to want to improve? So think about, uh, I, want, I want results. I don't want hard work. I want results. And so it's what I call outhouse management. Most companies know all the stuff and dump on the employees. Work harder, work faster, do more. Ah. But really, they got to all be on the same page. Bosses control information. They pretend it's too sensitive. They'll think I'm making too much money, and they'll slow down. Well, they're already going slow. How do we get them going faster? Well, maybe it's because I don't think they can, they're can. they smart enough. I don't think they. Uh, I'm going to trust them. Maybe they'll learn more and move on and sell it to my competitor. You know, I don't know. It's crazy, right? So what do we need? We need a scorecard, detailed scorecard. So I've got a little acronym called <clears throat> SWAT.com. So statistics, st uh, baseball, all of them. You go to a baseball game, what do they got? They got on the scoreboard up there. They got everybody's runs, hits, and errors, batting averages. Everybody knows everything about everybody. There's no secrets. Everybody has a score. And if you're only batting 200, you're looking for a job or a new coach or, or something, right? Maybe a, new, a secret pill will make you better. So so what's your job cracking, tracking plan for goals, scorecard, job costs? So, so SWAT.com um, is simple. Goals have to be specific. That means measurable, specific. Try and work harder is not a goal. That's a dream. That's a vision. That's a waste of time. Finish by Friday is clear. Specific, it has to be written. If it's not written, it's not worth the paper it's not written on. It has to be attainable. You can't make goals that are stupidly too hard. And it has to be time dependent. There has to be a deadline. Miserable target with a deadline. Uh, then it has to be challenging, clear, on purpose, on target with the visions and values of your company. We can't say a goal is to save 10% by screwing our subcontractors. No, we can't do that. So it has to be on purpose and on va uh, within your company values. And it has to be miserable. Said it more than once, right? <clears throat> so if I ask your, you, do you set goals? I did a survey of over 2,000 attendees at World of Concrete. I speak there every every year. I used to. And uh, there's always 400 people in my sessions, and I did two or three sessions a, a year for 20 years plus. And I did a lot of surveys. <clears throat> and I would say, does your company have written goals? 60% no. Do you have a profit goal for the year? They go, yeah, 10%. I go, 10% of what? Uh, sales. Well, what if you don't make the sales? It's not 10%. That's not a clear goal. What's clear? 100 grand, 500 grand. Do you know what your overhead is? Yeah, it's 10%. 10% of what? It's not 10% of cost. It is what it is. You add up all your people and your overhead, and that's a number. It's 750,000. It's not 10%. Uh, do you know what your volume goal? Yeah, we want to, most people know how much sales they want to get. Do you have repeat customer goals? Eh, no, 92%. Bid, do you know your win ratio? Bid, hit, win ratio. 90% said no. So, so, so what do you expect? You're going to continue to struggle if you don't even know what your goals are and you don't even know if you're hitting them. Do our employees have goals? 71% no. 
So what are we going to do? We need, we need to start setting some goals. So I've got this action plan here. So we set up our goal. You know, our goal is to improve uh, field productivity by 10%. Well, first of all, I got to know what it currently is and how, and then 10% faster. Deadline by the end of the year. Who's on our team? Well, we need a couple of supers, a foreman, project manager, and maybe a bookkeeper. Okay. So what are we going to do? The first thing we have to do is get the team together and come up with the goals, come up with the action plan. And then we can come up with deadlines and uh, responsibilities and uh, all those kinds of things. But we got to have a team. And most small business owners think, i got to just make these goals. No, you want your team to be involved to make the goals, team design goals, so that they feel like they're part of the part of the program. And so, you know, let's just uh, think of a goal. Let's come up with a goal here to uh, – oops, sorry. There we go. Uh, let's say we want to grow 25% by the end of whatever, the year. So we got to get the four people together. And then first thing we want to do is have a team meeting to develop the plan. And we want to create the steps and the timeline of what we're trying to do, like the plan to improve sales. What are we going to have to do to improve sales? Well, we need to have a marketing plan. We need to have a customer target list. We need to get involved in the community. We need to do this. We need to do that. We need to go see more people. But, uh, we, for, yeah, okay, so we assign all those different tasks to the people. And then what we do is we start working on it. We create action plans and deadlines. And we have follow-up dates. We set follow-up dates. So every two weeks, we all get back together. How you doing? What you doing? Are you moving ahead? Are things happening? So we stay in touch. So that's a big picture goal. Now, out in the field, we want to hit the, hit the, hit the goal, the, the crew hour goal. We say, okay, we got five, 500 uh, – 5,000 hours divided by 10, that's it's uh, 50 weeks, uh, et cetera, 10 men or eight hours a day. We've been come up with how many days we have. We divide it by five crew, three crews, 10 crew, and we tell, okay, we know we have 16 days to get it done. And that's it. It's simple. So then we need a tracking system to see how many hours we're spending on a weekly basis, daily basis, so we can keep track. And if we're falling behind, we have to have an improvement program. What are we going to do to improve, right? So that's the key here. Think about what it takes to get to the next level. <clears throat> so you're going to need a scoreboard, a scorecard and a scoreboard. And we're going to have to have statistics, information, feedback. You never go to a football game and the scoreboard's out. You always know where the game is. If you're on a field, you know if you're winning or losing. There's a Yard lines, you know where you have to go to make a first down. It's real clear. Out in the field, construction or contracting, you don't know where you are. You just keep working. Yeah, you can maybe see the end, but, you know, when are you done? So let's say you're um, a masonry contractor. You're putting up a wall. When are you 50% done? Well, you got the footing. You got to dig the footing. Then you got the footing. Then you got rebar. Then you got to start setting block. Then you got to put rebar in the block. Then you got to grout the block. And then you got to tool the block and make it nice. So when you have done, it's really hard to know. So we just keep working. We need to have a system that tracks those kinds of things. One of my really good clients for over 10 years, I mean, I've, I'm at a meeting with him, like way out somewhere, not at his office. And he looks at his phone. He says, hey, man, I had a good day today. Our guys laid 872 blocks and the goal was was – was uh, 900 and we made money today. He knew that just looking at his phone. That was a that was crazy. He's way ahead of his time. This was 10 or 12 years ago. <clears throat> so what do we want to do? And without a score, there's no game. You can't win, right? That's the key. So so when you go golfing, you know, you either get a birdie or a par or a bogey. You know exactly where you are. So what can we do to make it happen? Um, some th let me just see on the slides here. Yeah, so we can make it simple, clear, challenging, realistic. we got to update them. What else? We can have a competition. I can go out and talk to my foreman and say, you get this done, I'll give you $100, every guy on the, on the crew. You make it fun. Make it competitive. Make it uh, energetic. Uh, let them team design it. Make it written and visual. Why do you think we have huddles? Why do you think it – when the basketball, NBA basketball is going bad, they stop 
and they sit down and they uh they look at this they, they I think it's the slide here. Yeah, they sit down and they look at the what what do we have to do? We know where we are, so now we have to do. There's the there's the old uh, uh, Laker coach, and uh, anyway, so what do I got to do? I got to have a scorecard with all statistics, and that's what I have to do. So what do we need to do now to make it happen? So how do we write clear targets and goals? Number one, we identify clearly what's expected, the measurable target, statistics, how many, how long, the deadline, target, and goals. Number two, you might have more than one goal. So we prioritize. What's priority one? Labor on budget. Okay, safety, that's always number one, but we got to do them simultaneously. Uh, maybe material over rent. Let's, let's just get the labor right first. Maybe later we talk about it, material. So we prioritize what, what targets and goals, and then we set them. We assign a team. So let's say we're trying to improve our concrete uh, uh, installation procedures because we tend to have a lot of cracks. So the goal is to fix all, get the cracks, so make it so we never have cracks. So who should be on that team? Well, probably a foreman, probably an engineer, project manager, somebody with some technical knowledge. Uh, maybe we get the uh, structural engineer to come out for an hour and meet with us uh, and talk about how to do it right with the right design mix, et cetera, right kind of rebar, dowels, or whatever, <clears throat> expansion joint distances, et cetera. So we assign the team, and then we let them work together to develop the plan to improve the, pr the program and meet our goal of no more cracks, right? Then we, then we assign uh, the team uh, to develop some timelines, some deadlines. When are we going to make this happen? And we, in number six, we define the measurables. What are we going to measure? So, we're, so right now we tend to have cracks, and you know we pour every every fifty thousand square feet of slab. We get cracks in like four thousand feet. Well, we got to get it down to zero, right? So we, we define the measurables, and then we come up with a scorecard and tracking system. And it's a little uh, gray uh, when we're talking about cracks, but hours, crew hours is easy, scorecard. And then we set regular updates and check-in times so when we're going to get back together and see if it's working and if we have to adjust it to make it better. And then, of course, number eight, we're going to make sure we got the right tools, resources, the budgets, the tools, the, who has authority to spend money, all those kinds of things. We're going to make sure that's clear. And then number nine, we need to have an update, whether it's weekly or monthly. Uh, we want to have an update of where we are whenever we're measuring things. So if we're trying to get our crew hours, we're going to do that every every week. We're going to know where we are. We're going to get the crew together. We're going to talk about how many hours we have, what's in the budget, and if we're over or under budget, right? So we're going to have an update. And then lastly, we're going to celebrate. If we hit our goals and targets, we're going to share some of the, some of the results. We're going to create an incentive program based on achieving results for the crew. So everybody feels like they're participating in improving the company. So as we move to, to thinking about how do I implement, so, so what are some results you want to hit? Well, maybe you want to grow your business 25% with higher margins. Maybe you want to increase your net profit from 5% to 7.5, or maybe 7.5 to 10. Net profit pre-tax, not gross, net, after overhead. Maybe you want to improve how you win work, bid, hit, win ratio to one out of three. Currently, you're one out of five because you're picking the wrong jobs to bid against the wrong competitors. We need to get into a higher higher uh, qualifications to achieve the, uh, to be on the bid list or the price list or the proposal list. And so maybe we have to improve what to get on a better list or a better customer uh, target, right? Um, and then, and so maybe we want to add some new customers. So we want to add new and we want to convert some to loyal. Loyal use you one out of two, one out of three. Uh, repeat use you whenever you're cheap, low bid, right? So we've got to have some targets. We've got to keep track. I ask my clients, what's your win ratio? And they go, I don't know. Well, how many jobs you bid? A lot. You get many? Well, I don't know. Not enough. Well, that's no, how do you know? How do you know who you should bid to, who you don't bid to, right? And, and maybe we need to start thinking about a strong management team. So we need to make that a goal 
and put a plan in place. Uh, you know, so if let's say you you're, you need another project manager, but you don't have a general manager, what do we need to do? We need to hire a really strong senior project manager who potentially could move into general manager, right? So that's we got to have a plan. We got to we got to know what we want and then have a plan. That's our goal. Maybe we want to improve. Uh, excuse me, hire a PM, superintendent, and two foremen and a crew. You know, so that's a goal. We need a plan to make that happen. May we put in a re referral incentive program? May we put in a, a recruiter? Whatever we do, uh, we want to improve field productivity. We talked about that. We we need to implement job cost tracking. Well, that involves some work. We might need some software. We ne might need somebody assigned with the task. That would be the plan for implementation. But if we don't do anything about it, we're going to continue on the same pace, not making the money we should. May we need to get our estimates more accurate within one or two or two or three percent of labor hours. We bid it at a thousand hours. It comes in at a thousand four hours. That's pretty darn good. Not bid it at a thousand and some coming at eight hundred and some coming at twelve hundred. That's bad bidding. That's not bad crew. That's bad bidding because we don't track our job cost history. May we need to implement ten new systems. Uh, I'm going to do another video on systems uh, coming up for for y'all and um, check it out but you know how do we install systems and make sure everybody implements them and we enforce that everybody uses them right so now what are we going to do We're, we need to set our goals our targets and all those kinds of things so in order to get to the finish line we have to know where we're headed to win the olympics like hussein bolt he knew what he was after he worked hard to achieve it but he knew clearly what he needed to do. He also had a lot of natural talents. So uh, set your goals, get started to win. And then, of course, uh, results are the number one indicator of what? You, your leadership, your ability as a winning coach, your inspiration, motivation, to, and vision, winning vision, your focus on results versus doing work, your ability to motivate players to win, your ability to plan and have a good playbook and a strategy. Those are the keys. And when you're not hitting your goals, what do we have to do? We don't blame our people. We blame ourselves. And what can I do? My input equals their output. What can I do to create a winning team? All right. So that's the key. Hopefully you learned some things today. And uh, if you need some help, give me a call. Uh, just email me. We'll set up a time to talk and talk about how to improve your company. All right. Thanks for being here.